Hi, everybody. Welcome to Network in Action. My name is Ronnie. Today, I have the pleasure to talk with Paul Kenny. He is a banker with Bank South in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Paul is actually the business development uh, officer there. So, you know, let's uh, say hi to Paul. Hey, Paul. Good morning. How hi, are everybody. you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. All right. So, Paul, tell us, what is it that you do? Um, I'm a business development officer for Bank South here in the Atlanta market of Georgia. Um, I work specifically with small businesses um, to help them manage their cash flow, to help them end with any lending needs they have, um, basically anything that they might need to run their business financially. Um, having said that, I, we're a smaller bank, so I wear a lot of hats. I also work with customers as far as um, lending opportunities on the personal side, home equity loans, bridge loans if they're looking to buy a property, construction loans. Um, and, and I get very involved in the community. So we're a small community bank. We do a lot of community involvement. I'm in, involved with a couple of non-for-profits in the area where we try to help support them as much as possible. Um, so really, I wear a lot of hats and I, I can help anybody from your, your, your most basic personal needs to, to business banking to commercial lending. Nice. That is very, very cool. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, okay, let me back, backtrack. So how long have you been in business? I've been in banking 23 years now. Whoa, that's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, good job. Okay, so 23 years in business. Do you have like a favorite customer service story? Favorite customer service story? Um, yeah, I do actually have one. It was when I moved down to Georgia about five years ago. Um, I was working in a branch as a branch manager, which is what I've done for the majority of my career for on a Saturday. Um, we have limited hours on a Saturday from like nine to one. It was for a different institution and I got a a, we had a young man who came in to try to cash a check. Um, and without going into too much details, there was a lot of red flags. The check, he could not share with us why. Um, he, we told him we needed to speak to the maker on the check, the person who wrote him the check. Um, he gave us a phone number. We called that number. It turned out to be his girlfriend in the parking lot. He had stolen some checks from somebody's house. Um, we reached out to our customer. She was in, out of town in another state. Um, and we were going to have to block her account. And... Um, she was with her, her nine month old daughter. Her, she was away on business and had to pay for her hotel. So, you know, blocking her account was obviously gonna block her debit card and everything like that. So what we did was we found out the, the nearest ATM where she could get enough money out to go and pay the hotel in cash and get money for the remainder of her four days that she had there. Um, and I waited to block her card and, you know, walked her through that. And I stayed in the branch for about an extra hour and a half afterwards until she got back to let me know that she'd got the money she'd gotten. Um, that we could go and block her account. She'd be back in town the following Tuesday and she would come and see me and we would get her set up with a new account. And I think for me, the reason I did it is because I, I have a wife and I have three daughters and I can't imagine them being stuck. Um, we have policies and procedures. We're a bank. We do. Um, there's things that we have to do, but sometimes you have to do what's right. And I think that one sticks with me because it was very close to home. Um, and, you know, she was very grateful. Wow, that's a crazy, crazy story. Yeah. That's, I, I've been, I haven't been in that situation per se, mm -hmm. but I have been stuck on a trip before where I lost my wallet, and guess what? Now I have to cancel my credit cards, and what do I do? So, wow, that is that is incredible. I'm sure she's now customer for life, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So let me ask you this. So we we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, you guys are a small community bank. You guys mm -hmm. do a lot of uh, nonprofit work. Is there any other things that you say that you feel that you guys are, you know, separating yourself, like in terms of service uh, from other banks? I would say definitely service. We have a very personal feel. Um, it's it's we're, we're a family owned bank. So we've been in existence 75 years and our current CEO, um, his family has owned the bank for those full 75 years. It's not unusual to see him come into our branches, which having worked for bigger banks, it's, it's unusual to meet the CEO and sit down and have a conversation and have him ask you, what do you need to do your job better? Um, they really do live what they say. We're very involved in the communities. Atlanta is a little different than some of the marketplaces we're in just because it's so much bigger. Um, and a lot of people are not familiar with us here, um, but customer service is huge and we don't charge a lot of fees. So we're a traditional bank in that we, we, we bring deposits in and we lend money out and we make money on the spread between the two. So a lot of my boss, small business customers are surprised to see that we don't charge for all the services they may charge for it under the bank because that's not how we make money. Um, so you mentioned earlier, you guys uh, are involved in some nonprofit. Do you want to name a few? Uh, we're involved well, actually through Network in Action. I'm, I'm now forming a partnership. I was just on the phone with 
um, Steve Gard, who runs our network, network and action group. And we, we support a charity down here called the Drake House, which is for um, women who've gone through domestic violence and they're getting replaced with them and their families. Um, so we're going to be doing some financial education pieces for them. So I love to teach a lot of what I've learned over the years if I, has either been shared with me or I may have stolen from people um, or borrowed, let's put it that way. But um, I do enjoy to go out and give, there's a lot of underbanked individuals out there in, in our society who aren't aware of what they have advantage of. I know growing up, I wasn't taught, you know, how to manage my credit and how to manage my money. And it's taken me this long to, to kind of get that knowledge under my belt. So we're going to be partnering with them to go out and do some seminars on how to build your credit, how to buy a home, how to budget your money. Um, I'm also involved. It's very near and dear to my heart. My wife works for a not-for-profit here in Georgia that does free vision screenings, glasses, um, hearing aids, um, eye yeah. surgeries for the underprivileged here in Georgia. Um, so I, I'm involved with one of their local clubs that does fundraising and, and collects used glasses that we, we recycle. Um, so I've been involved with them for about three years. Um, we get our kids involved as well as a way to give back. So I, I'm actually working. Um, I spoke to my wife after I got off the phone with Steve and asked if we could somehow partner with um, them and Drake House to maybe get um, these individuals and their kids. You know, they're going to need vision services and things like that. So it's not cheap to get a pair of glasses. I know where I wear contact lenses and I know how much it costs me. And if you don't have insurance, it's probably not a priority when it comes to deciding, nope. you know, if you're going to get vision services or if you're going to buy food or pay your bills. So I try to think how I can link my clients together and people I know to, to benefit them. So we're hoping we can do something with that. Nice, nice. That's beautiful. So I'm going to ask you the dreaded COVID question. Yes. Um, I personally am so over COVID. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I call it the dreaded COVID question. But at this point, okay. I'm just so down with it. But let's ask it. So COVID-19, um, has that affected your business? It has. So I've been with Bank South since January, but through the majority of the pandemic, I was a branch manager with a retail bank. Um, we, we closed our lobbies for a period of time. Mm -hmm. um, it's been challenging for everybody, right? It's changed the way we do business and how, how we work. And it's caused concerns for people as a manager. You know, I have people who um, my wife stayed home. My kids were home. I got up every morning and went to work. And at the time, you know, I would have liked to have stayed home. You know, you put yourself out there, you're out helping people. But, um, you know, when I think about it from this perspective, if, if the bank closed their doors and you can't access your money, um, I can only imagine what kind of panic that would cause for people. So we needed to come to work and show up. And it, it, we've been lucky enough to, with technology to be doing things towards Zoom meetings. And mm -hmm. it, it's impacted me going out and visiting my customers, which is something I love to do. But we've managed to keep the doors open. We're required to be open. We're an essential business. Um, and it's been, I think I've had deeper, longer conversations with people that I may have come seen in the branches for years. And now this is had to sit down and had them reevaluate it, whether it's impacted their job, whether it's impacted their home. And, and all we've tried to do is, is be here to help as much as we can. Very nice. Yeah, no, that's a, it's been hard. I've, I personally finally starting seeing, you know, the, the light at the end of the tunnel of this. I know businesses are finally coming back. I, here in Texas, a lot of the restrictions have been removed. So you really start seeing things happening and it's it's so refreshing that's why i'm kind of done with covid i personally got vaccinated so yeah i did I'm my part my second one done on thursday so. well good luck with that sir yeah. godspeed um, yes, um the second course, one is no fun as a, as a bank you know we've been very involved with 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 the cares act so we've been very involved in the PPP good. programs and helping businesses get the money they need to get by that that they've been provided by the government so um, that was a learning curve in the beginning, you know, it was something that was, we've never had to do before. Um, we did some aspects better than others, but this second time around, I've been very, very involved with, um, banks out here in Georgia, reaching out to local clients to see if we can help them with their second round. So that, that's really been, um, you know, sometimes you, you look at your job, especially as a banker, you know, bland old banker, and you wonder how you make a difference. Um, but PPP has given us me an opportunity to kind of work with with some clients that I wouldn't have worked with before to help them get that money because it's not easy to, to to work through anything with the SBA. So, yeah, absolutely. All right, this is amazing. Your bank sounds like the best place in the world. I wish you guys were here in Houston to help me out. Um, but would you mind sharing with us what is the best way to reach you? Sure. Um, my office number is four zero four eight three two seven nine three six. 
And my email is P Kenny, my last name, K-E-N-N-E-Y at banksouth.com. Perfect. Everybody reach out to Paul. He's got some good, good stuff going on for you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.